following contest is scheduled for one fall. Welcome everybody to Wrestle Pro here in Brooklyn, New York. Dave Sturgeo on commentary right now for our opening contest. Chris Payne taking on Sean Donovan, the Messiah of old school himself. He's got himself a tough task with the NYPD officer, Chris Payne. Both of these guys in their backyards right now. Chris Payne being from Staten Island. Sean Donovan being from New York City, New York, right here in Manhattan. And we're in Brooklyn, so we're representing a couple of the boroughs here tonight. Off the ropes now, we're gonna go back. And Donovan catches that elbow right in the back of the face. Chris Payne now heads off. That'll change the game right then and there. Something to be said about Sean Donovan is that he is angry. Angry would be the word I use, but it's been used over and over again. Sean Donovan has a mean streak. He feels disrespected, slighted by the WrestlePro management. Straight right hand. He has no care for authority, let alone an NYPD uh, PD officer. And this is going to be a tough task for Chris Payne to get out of one of the more angrier gentlemen here at WrestlePro. Referee Wally in the middle of things. Good snap mare right there. Here comes the Donovan elbow. Very old school approach to his offensive weaponry. Just a count of one. And now Sean Donovan trying to slow the pace down. Chris Payne trying to channel the energy of this Brooklyn, New York crowd here tonight. Huge capacity crowd here in Brooklyn. Chris Payne trying to fight back, here he comes. Oh, cut right back off by Donovan. Sean Donovan, no stranger to the crowds here in New York. At one point, I believe he was banned from the entire state. But he's made his way back and now today trying to secure a win over what is the number one contender to the WrestlePro Gold Championship. That's right, you heard it right. Chris Payne won the Gold Rush Rumble a couple months back, has not cashed in until November the 9th in Rawway. It'll be Chris Payne taking out Christopher Avery Kuehling. Now Sean Donovan trying to dictate the pace here.
Don Donovan now measuring every strike. He's so precise. And now the Brooklyn crowd with a chant of Humpty Dumpty. Let's see if Chris Payne can knock him down and crack him. Chris Payne finally ducks the line. Big close line of his own. And another one. Chris Payne on fire now. That's the third consecutive close line. Donovan reeling. Oh! Donovan now puts up the boots. Stops Chris Payne in his track. Oh! A huge Del Rio kick in the corner. Sends Donovan to the mat for a cover. A count one, two. Just a two count there by Sean. Do uh, I'm sorry, Chris Payne trying to get the job done here. Uh-oh, look at this now. Chris Payne almost with a big offensive maneuver there, but Sean Donovan puts the brakes on that. Oh, knee to the face. Chris Payne looking for a drive-by. Connected on the money. That could do it. Chris Payne now trying to get the crowd here. He should have went for a pin. Oh, went to the well too many times with that Del Rio kick in the corner. Donovan off the ropes. Big knee. Back, 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 back. Gone. A 400-footer that would have left this city. And now Donovan now in control. Oh, a hard lariat. Found its mark. That could be it. No! Not so fast. There's still fight left in this NYPD officer. Dave Sturchill here on commentary live in Brooklyn, New York. We'd like to thank GoPro Wrestling for getting it done. Here, make sure you go check them out on all their social medias for all your pro wrestling needs. And now Payne got him up. Payne's got him way up. Donovan trying to protect. No, oh, planted. That could be it. That is it. Here is your winner. Payne getting the job done here in Brooklyn to start us off. Like we said, he's number one contender. The next time we see Chris Payne, he'll be squaring off one-on-one -on -one with Christopher Avery chewing for the richest prize in WrestlePro. We'll be back, folks.
We're back here at WrestlePro Tag Team Action. And look at this way. Now, wait a minute. We're starting to offer Officer Ronald of Job Security offering Beach Bum TJ Crawford a t shirt, maybe a sign to join the security. Th oh, yeah! Bell sounds, here we go. TJ Crawford. Dragon suplex there by Crawford. And now Malcolm, a trimmer, leaner Malcolm entering the ring. And let's not forget, Officer James on the outside, he can play a factor. However, I think his head is very close to falling off. The Beach Bum's working as a cohesive unit as they always have. Rock kick by the Flamingo. Freddie IV look, look, looking for some surfing. Now Malcolm trying to take control here. And now look at this, Officer James, you knew it was only a matter of time before he tried to get involved here, and that's the opening that Officer Malcolm needed. Crashing to the mat, the Flamingo. Using the double knees and now marching around the ring and now we'll apply a submit like a toying with him. Officer Ronald toying with the Flamingo Freddie IV right in the middle of the ring. Look at this offense. Oh, into a gut buster. Are you kidding me? Just a two count on the Flamingo. Don't discredit the Flamingo Freddy IV. That boy can fight. And right now, he is in the wrong part of the beach as he looks to get over to TJ Crawford. And now look at this now. Double team offense. Got to get him out. Oh, baby. Officer Ronald catches some air. And look at that. TJ Crawford playing that game. If it wasn't for TJ, this match could be over. But now Malcolm in the middle of the ring applying a shin lock. The Brooklyn crowd trying to get behind Freddie. He's got to make a tag desperately. Oh my goodness. Plants Freddie in the middle of the ring. There's a two count. Freddie IV again with the save. Oh, wait a minute. What, what is this? This must be that shell defense. In football, we call it prevent. In wrestling, we call it a shell. A tag, a tag, here comes Crawford. It's Crawford and it's Ronald. Officer Malcolm just ate boot. TJ Crawford up. This is unreal. Officer Ronald in a bad way now. Tag back into Freddie IV who looks to be a little bit more rejuvenated than before. Now he's setting him up. Oh no! Oh no, wait! He connected with TJ Crawford and now Malcolm scoops him up! He's holding him in position for what? He's got to fight by himself, TJ's knocked out! Oh my God, oh my God! They call that lockdown. Here are your winners, Job Security. And just like that, one ill-advised move by TJ Crawford, and that cost the Beach Bums the match. More to come, folks. Coming up next, we got CPA taking on Bear Bronson. We'll be back.
Some of you may have known that the big deal, Craig Steele, will be taking on Dan Moff. However, I'm just getting word that the main event tonight will be decided in a tables match. We continue our show with the following contest scheduled for one fall. to the ring by Jay Enterprise. From Bear Mountain weighing 286 pounds, Bear Brunson. Big fight feel here tonight in Brooklyn. Bear Bronson, former silver champion, taking on the abominable CPA, finally joined on commentary by the founder of WrestlePro, Pat Buck. Pat, one of your students, another one you trained from scratch. Both of these guys head to head tonight here in Brooklyn. Yeah, one heck of a wrestler and the other CPA. <laughs> so here we go now, CPA trying to outsmart Bear Bronson, that's not gonna work. No, nah, but the truth is, CPA is one of my best, worst creations. The guy knows how to get it done in the ring. Oh! Drop kick there. Another one. How many is it going to take to take the big man down? Oh, you might be going to do... I have my head set upside down. Man. Boy, I hope we got that gold. <laughs> Thank you. I ran a pay-per-view the other day, and I can't put on my headset right. <laughs> So now CPA in complete control here, but it's early. We'll find out. He's going to go for a monkey flip in the corner, but chances are monkey flipping a man the size of Bronson, not always successful. Oh, boy. Went for a tornado DDT to no avail. Bear Bronson. Oh. Good Lord. And now a set time from the 286-pound Bronson. Every time I see Bear Bronson in the ring, he gets equally better and better. Excuse me. Better and better each time I see him. He's truly one of Independence Wrestling's greatest heavyweights currently working today. We've seen him do battle with Dan Moff for about six months, fighting over the Wrestle Pro Silver Championship. And now he's out to make a statement. I think Bear Bronson might have underestimated CPA. He's been in there with some guys even bigger than himself. He thought CPA would walk all over. He's not getting off that easy. The Brooklyn crowd giving it to one Jay Enterprise. He's also a factor, always is. Got to keep your eyes on Jay. CPA now fighting for his life. And all these kids want their taxes done early. <laughs> they filled out their 1099s. Oh, oh, wait a minute. It's a clip-on. you got to be kidding me. The clip-on tie is the opening that CPA might need right now. Oh, oh maybe those not. fists are lethal weapons, but nothing to the bear paw. Oh, barrel roll. He's in trouble here. That could be it. Real early. Oh, just a two count, says referee Stephen Dumang, one of now, our senior officials here at WrestlePro. Now that the extension for tax season is done, CPA has spent equal amount of time in his car going from promotion. 
to promotion all across the country, gathering his skills so he can no longer just be the top guy at the office. He wants to be the top guy in professional wrestling. He's putting in the work for sure. He's trying to score what would you would have to assume, Pat, an upset victory over Bear Bronson. Wheelbarrow roll through. He might got it. No. Almost. A second away from the upset of the night thus far. Oh, heads up. Shoulder met post. Post wins every time. Xander Price trying to get some words of wisdom, blocking the camera shot. He wants to be paid for any of that uh, footage. <laughs> That's a very specific company, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Crowd here in Brooklyn, never shy. This action is not slow down here. CPA fine, look at that limber. Oh! oh. <laughs> CPA finding a missile dropkick from the second turnbuckle. Maybe he's trying to finally conquer those height fears. Oh, sky high. Does he have it here? Whoa, and if you notice, Jay Enterprise was about a half a second away from getting in the ring. How much would a victory mean to CPA? You know, he started as a singles competitor, has tremendous matches against EC3 and other competitors, but then migrated to the tag team scene with Kip Stevens in the Breakfast Club. But tonight might be his night in Brooklyn, New York. He needs to secure that big win as we actually are almost out of time in 2018. So. He's definitely trying to build some steam here. The question, does the tie pad the blow or does it deliver more offense? Yeah, Gotta get this guy out of here. This guy is constantly making an impact in all of Bear Bronson's matches. And Bronson has the time now to recover. Oh, oh wait a minute. Man can't fight if he can't see. Oh! The old Three Stooges. Oh, no! Oh. But that, that, that was the opening, Pat. The opening that he needed. And now up. We'll Bear see. Claw. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, no! Here is your winner, Bear Bronson. All it took, Pat, was that one opening for Jay Enterprise to get involved. And now Bear Bronson has made what seems to be easy work of CPA. Tremendous outing for CPA. He had the one, that one almost in the bag was for the Enterprise. But hey, they don't call him the top dollar, pub, top dollar publicist for nothing. He's attached himself to uh, this meal ticket here and can't say I can't blame him. Blame him.
Introducing next, from south of heaven, weighing in at 178 pounds, Azria! Everybody, Pat Buck here calling commentary, calling the ring ring action here at WrestlePro in Brooklyn. Join along, Dave Destruction. Nobody's called me Destruction in like three years. <laughs> what do you call you? My name. Sergio? <laughs> here we go. A little distracted here, could ring the bell. So here we go now, a debut, Pat. We brought another debut here at WrestlePro. Dave. You might know him more than I do, Azriel, he's one of those enigmas, you gotta figure them out. Azrael's no stranger to the independent scene. High flyer, the name Azrael means to angel of destruction. You've known this man for many years. High flying competitor. And he's in there with two of the best we got. Bobby Wayward and Matt McIntosh. Oh, oh head stop. Oh, caution to the wind early. Look whoa. at this, wow, whoa. Bending him like a pretzel right in the middle of the ring. Mac, look, but look at the quad strength of Bobby Wayward. My goodness. We were looking for a break, but it got a, caught a boot to the midsection. Up and over, but landing on the apron. Blocks the fist, and now a huge kick to the side of the face. Here goes Matt McIntosh. Oh, look at that. You want to talk about innovative offense. He's rewriting the book. Bobby Wayward in, in control here with McIntosh. Azriel on the outside. One fall to a finish. The name of the game is isolation. You ought to get one person out of the ring. You want to pick up the victory in a triple threat match. A lot of competitors hate multi-man matches. So much can go on. You don't have to lose or be pinned or submit to lose the match. A lot can hit you from all angles. And right now, Wayward's trying to capitalize. That's a big, big factor, folks. It's about winning these types of matches and trying to avoid a way to lose. So now, Azriel coming back on the offense. Look at that! Oh. Hurricane Rana right in the middle of the ring, sending McIntosh to the outside. And now, Wayward taking full advantage of the one on one contest here now. Wayward more the grounded competitor, keeps it on the floor, likes to apply submissions, kicks, strikes. Azrael's more of an aerial artist. McIntosh kind of parlays his skills oh. into each and every realm. Both, all three men about equal size. Yeah, you could have said, I mean, introducing these guys relatively in the realm of 10 pound difference either way. All three men, cardio condition is superior. Look at McIntosh, picks oh. the ankle. Ever the opportunist. Apple picking on the outside is Matt McIntosh. Setting him down, a kick right to the back of the head. Hard roundhouse. Oh! oh! There's a German apple for you. Unbelievable. McIntosh on fire. Missile drop kick. That's what a maneuver! I don't know if he, <laughs> I don't know if he got. He's all up to of his it. feet. How is that possible? I think he might have gotten the knees up. Oh, and a cutter and a spike! Spiking like Gronkowski. My goodness! That move by McIntosh, a wake-up call to Azrael. Oh, kick wait, we're the going low. There we go. High. Look at the strength. He muscles him over. Fisherman to play. Azrael smart, we're on the outside. Damage is done, get out of there. But again, you don't have to be pinned to lose the matchup. Here we o go now. O'Connor roll up. 
Dives through, going for a pump handle variation. Look at this. He has him up. That's gotta oh be it. Oh my goodness. He's got it. it. Here is your winner, Matt McIntyre. Talk about a statement win right off the bat. He's been having a heck of a year, Pat. This guy is on fire, and I hope everyone can tune in to see him face Super Crazy November 9th live on Fight TV to watch Russell Pro action. Matt McIntosh, one of Russell Pro's finest. tonight, our main event of the evening, the big deal Craig Steele will be taking on Dan Moff in a tables match. But the following women's division contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from the Atronoma Galaxy, the alien, Chris Stacklander! Creator Pro New York and Creator Pro New Jersey. You know, technically I've trained like 20 different females over the years as a trainer, but only two have graduated. <laughs> These are the two in the ring right now. Chris Statlander and Corinne Ming. Corinne with the confidence. Yeah, Corinne, you gotta know this new found confidence in her. I don't know if she wants to pull this off here with Statlander, who again has found her way on the independent scene. Both of these girls making their rounds. And Karen Mink thanking everybody here in Brooklyn for being a friend. Not really sure what's going on here. The objective is to beat your opponent. There we go, guys. So Connor roll up. Oh, that was closer than we thought to start us off here. Nice pass by. Oh, you don't ever, you don't really see that work. <laughs> Considering she's the world's greatest alien, you think she'd be a. Uh, Hover, than hovering hats. around. <laughs> oh my! I didn't expect to see this. You know, Chris Statlander. She's Go. quite the athlete. She has more of an impressive move set. Corinne Mink, though, strong as an ox. A legit former shot putter, not to be undermined. But right now, it looks like Corinne Mink is really taking Chris Statlander to church. This is not the first time these ladies have done battle, so they definitely know each other's playbooks rather well. And now Corinne Mink charging on in, trying to get up and over. Statlander went for a right hand, countered with a huge right hook by Mink. Corinne's in a vulnerable position. Yeah, you gotta be careful out there, you're in no man's land. Oh, underneath. Oh. Too uh -oh. much. Oh, oh no! Face meets the hardest part of the ring, the apron. 
Chris Statlander coming off victories against Tennille Dashwood of Creative Pro New York. Chris Statlander making her real independent buzz against John Silver at Beyond Wrestling. And she's looking to continue that momentum here tonight against Corinne Mink. Got to listen to a five count. She does have to five to break. She breaks it there about four and a half. And now using the rope, look at that. The body doesn't bend that way, Pat. I think Corinne Mink's gotten her head a little bit. Kristen's had the advantage since the outside, but she just keeps going back to the throat, breaking the rules, trying to, there she goes, going for the victory right here. She's gonna wanna keep her on the ground, isolate the neck area, the damage done. Let's see what she does next. Got a ruthless bunch of kids in that front row. And bloodthirsty, here we go. Ooh, those hard right hands. That's all it takes sometimes, one swift kick to the gut while you're inhaling, and that'll knock the wind right out of you. To the corner hard. Now oh, he, oh, it's an elbow there. It's got to be the opening for Corinne. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Up top. Oh, my. Show for a victory roll. Oh, See what she has here. Oh, the, oh, oh, there's only one way to go. Screen machine goes down. Corinne Mink still in this fight for Statlander. was a little dazzled, a little rattled, excuse me. And look at this, the aggression coming on out of the alien. Both, this, both of these women have been booked by WWE when they had their first women's pay-per-view to be there as, a, as, as an extra, but to get invited to such a historic event means that you're in the top tier of the independent wrestling circuit. And these women deserve that. They definitely made 2018 their most successful year yet. And now who's gonna try to leave Brooklyn with a victory? Oh, oh she's held on a second longer. The longer this match goes, the longer it fav favors Statlander though. Yeah, I, I would definitely say the endurance factor would definitely be in Statlander's favor. Oh, maybe it's supposed to serve. Oh! No fatigue right here. Corinne now building steam in Brooklyn. Now look at this. Oh. Teardrop suplex. Got to get a little bit of a more uh, aggressive pin, I would say. You know, a little laissez-faire will not get it done against the alien. You got to dig deep. It's really hard late in the match. You don't want to dig your heels in, use that extra energy, but sometimes you just have to. Going for a scoop slam. You see those vicious elbows by the alien. And there's the power of Chris Statlander. Barrel roll. Oh my. Sets her up perfectly, Pat. I've seen her go up top before. Look at this. The alien flies. Oh, oh. she's going to meet some knees. And now look, the smart way to do this. Oh, where's she going? She went under the ring and right out in front of us. Proud to say I taught the girl everything she knows. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't teach her that one. Golden Girl's vision's not so oh, good. Oh, pass through there. A missed kick. And now Corinne. Oh! oh. On the money! Got her! Here is the winner, the Golden Girl, Corinne Mink! Corinne Mink securing a huge victory here in Brooklyn to try to keep that momentum going as we're trying to close out 2018. Impressive outing by both competitors, but the Golden Girl gets a golden victory here at WrestleBro. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the WrestlePro Gold Championship. <laughs> Introducing first, the challenger. From the islands of the Philippines, weighing in at 420 pounds, the
opponent from the psych ward of Manitoba County Jail, weighing in at 225 pounds, he is the Wrestle Pro Gold Champion, Christopher Avery Kulin! Let me get out of here, fucking God. Welcome to WrestlePro, calling the action live here in Brooklyn, New York. WrestlePro gold champion, Christopher Avery Kuehling versus the Filipino sumo, Falaba. Christopher Avery Kuehling, standing approximately six foot five, weighing about 260 pounds, although I'm not sure if that's what our ring announcer brought him in as. Against the six foot Filipino sumo, the 400 pound Falaba. Big fight feel for the richest prize in WrestlePro. Coming at you here from Brooklyn, New York. This has to be, and I'm, you know, I could be wrong. My calculations could be incorrect, but I don't know if these guys have ever faced off one-on-one -on -one before. They might not have. Both are loved by the Russell Pro faithful. CAQ sometimes a hard pill to swallow if you're not familiar with him. He looks like he just busted out of your local penitentiary. Maybe he has. Balabado. The boss start rocking every time this guy goes into the ring. It's unbelievable. Hard collar number no tie up. So now it remains to be seen who has the strength advantage. It might be 50-50 here. You know, size like, advantage obviously goes to follow Ba with, with the weight factor. I mean, it's 420 pounds to Christopher Avery Kuehling's 225, so he almost doubles him in weight. Oh boy, I said he was 265 five seconds ago. <laughs> there you go, pro wrestling for you. He's got to be more than 225. I'm sitting here and I'm a legit 210. All right, then maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and now both men trying to make some waves here. You know, these two behemoths battle for the higher ground in the ring. Last week, we both got to work for a different company. What the hell was that? That was remnants of a former personality, if you will, Sir Big Ben Cromwell. I'm just going to let these guys figure here? it out before I get to my, uh, oh, that ought to do it. <laughs> Big scoop slam. Falaba well, goes for his trademark leg drop. Oh, that'll suffocate you and crush your throat box. Falaba's been tearing up the national scene for Impact Wrestling, one of the most beloved superstars. I had a chance to be there, so did you this week, and we're yeah. not name dropping, but many people coming up to me going, hey, thank you for Falaba. And dare I say, mark the words of actually Sanjay Duck going, he's gotta be your best creation. And you know what? I don't wanna take all credit for Falaba, but if I can take a portion of it, that'll feel good. Oh, well deserved. I mean, Falaba has, you know, he's been around the block for a long time, and he has found himself within the last couple of years finding much, much success all over television, pay-per-view, everywhere, he's everywhere. And to me, personally, I think it's only a matter of time before, oh. unfortunately, whoa! Oh, the kick is good! Same before, unfortunately, it might be a matter of time before we lose him, if you know what I mean. Hey, you never know. The thing is, though, Wrestle Pro, one guy leaves, one guy's gonna step up and take his spot. 100%. And if anyone could, it's CAQ. The thing is, also, the same week, while people were thanking me for Fala, People were questioning, who is this guy lurking in the background? Nobody, other promotions have never believed in CAQ. I have since the first day I see him. I see the passion, the intensity, the look in his eyes. And I tell him, this is your year to get TV ready. This is your year to take that cheap jumpsuit, that psych ward you busted out of. Prove to these people and these fans and the wrestling community and the other boys that you're a star. And I believe he's gonna do it. Oh my goodness, heads up. Oh, it's using your head. CAQ going for a cover. Maneuvers like that, that proves why he's been undefeated for two years. We were just, I was just gonna make mention of his two year undefeated reign. He's been the gold champion for over a year. His next title defense, if he can get by Falaba, would be 11-9, November 9th from Rawway against the number one contender, Chris Payne. But we gotta get there first. You said it best though, the, the passion and the smarts and the skills 
that Christopher Avery Kuehling possesses are up there with everybody in the back. But you don't want to hit an island boy in the head. I believe Philippines might be islands too. <laughs> that they are. Oh, I want to do that. But he oh! Side suplex. Look at the strength of CAQ. That Going might be it. No. CAQ's got to go for it. Brought him the championship. That Q line. That Q line is a lariat to the back of your head and knocks you into next week. And nobody, and I repeat, nobody has kicked out of it yet in two years. Look at that. Look at the agility. The independent wrestling scene's littered with lightweights, cruiserweights, and God bless them. I love seeing two le legit heavyweights go toe-to-toe. Gotta be six to toe. foot three moving like this. Six foot four. Oh! Cross body! Low cross body, but it's effective. Gravity goes only one way. That'll knock the wind right out of anybody. And now this could be the opening that Falaba needs. Is it Falaba's night here in Brooklyn? Falaba pulled me aside, and even though he can only say Ba, <laughs> I knew that Ba meant that he wants to prove to all the wrestling fans that he is not just a comedy act. He is a guy that can beat the piss out of all his opponents. We see this man go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Austin Aries. And tonight, he may walk away Russell Pro Gold Champion. You know, it's, it's strange to think about all the dominating. Oh, that follow by has done in this year, or even the last couple years, and has not secured himself a championship. Matter so of time. You, so, so you said it best, is tonight the night to prove to Brooklyn, to prove to the world that he is championship quality right here and now. Oh, oh wait a minute. That is the, the people's, people's toe. toe. <laughs> AKA the Panda Claw. Oh my goodness. Huge. Filipino drop. Oh. Oh, that long, lanky frame of CHU. Just got to the ropes. I don't even know if he got his shoulder up. Referee Andre Giannico on top of the coverage here. And now, uh-oh. Man Manila Sunset coming up. If this lands, Pat, we're gonna have a new champ. Oh, oh no! And that'll break a tailbone with all that weight coming down. Folks, he's in back. The kill line! Oh. Goodbye, Bob. CAQ picks up another victory. Here is your winner and still Wrestle Pro Gold Champion, Christopher Avery Kills. Unbelievable as his two year undefeated reign continues, Pat. Oh, 
here. Get some tag team action here at WrestlePro. She said the Heavenly Bodies refused to give up the ring for Tina Spagna's entrance. Both of these teams approaching their prime in professional wrestling. The Bodies made their national TV debut recently on Impact against LAX. Team Espana, ironically enough, has an upcoming tag team, WrestlePro Tag Team Championship match against LAX, live November 9th on Fight TV here at WrestlePro. That's it, wait, ref Steve. And there we go. So both of these teams, former, well, no, that, I stand corrected. Jose and Jose B have been working their tails off for the last year trying to get an opportunity for the WrestlePro Tag Team Championship. That opportunity actually comes to them live on Fight TV on November 9th from Rawway as they take on the WrestlePro Tag Team Champions, LAX. But first, they gotta get by the bodies, and that's no easy task. Overwork and underpaid Team Espana is tired of playing nice. Gigolo Justin has that arm lock on. I think Gigolo Justin, obviously, the you would say the quicker of the two bodies. He's in there with Jose. Jose, he's been studying a little bit of uh, Johnny Saint or Jose Saint. <laughs> oh, wait. Nice. That doesn't work. Nice. That means his name is Joe. Here Shoulder we go. Shoulder tackle by Jose now. Oh, mama, right on the money. Oh. oh my goodness, you were making mention before about the Heavenly Bodies making their Impact Wrestling debut coming up in a couple weeks on television. And that is right where they belong. These guys are a well-oiled machine, former WrestlePro Tag Team Champions. Well, here's the thing in professional wrestling, exposure is the name of the game. The reason why people on Monday and Tuesday night get so much credit is because people see them. So when you're a professional wrestler, you get to be on a national circuit, it can up your confidence. And even though they did not come out victorious against LAX on national TV, dare I say it, up the confidence of the Heavenly Bodies. That could be the momentum that they need to get the victory here tonight. I mean, oh, Pat, so obviously you make the matches here at WrestlePro, so you'd wonder if the Heavenly Bodies are here, and escape Brooklyn with a win tonight. Does that change the landscape, oh. the landscape of the tag team division come November? I guess time will tell. Both of these competitors, or all these competitors, have what it takes to proudly represent WrestlePro in the tag team division, to be champions. Oh! Up and over and down, and now it's party time for Team Espana. Oh boy. Team Espana has evolved over the years here at WrestlePro. No longer your happy-go-lucky soccer players with that short fuse of a temper. They are established pro wrestlers. Yeah, they definitely have made their way. Yeah, you know, come to think of it, I, I, I know as a company, WrestlePro has really flourished in 2018, but it seems like every single person on the roster, you know, at least 90% of them, make it, like really hitting their strides, and this year in particular. Take a little Justin missing out. A little trip there. That would be a yellow card in the game of soccer. Oh, looks like a combination gore buster. Oh! You know, here at WrestlePro, what makes us different is, yes, we run about 30 live events a year, but our dojo is always open. Team Espana probably has more time at the dojo than any other two or singles competitors here in the company. You and would think at this point they got keys to the place. Absolutely. <laughs> Sunset flip attempt, oh. oh. Tagging the desirable Dustin behind the back. Shades of the brain busters there with that interesting sunset flip counter. You know, it's funny. Desirable Dustin and Gigolo Justin came up to me at the Impact tapings and they said, we're allowed to use the heavenly bodies here, right? And I said, that's you. There's no more copyright infringement. These guys are the heavenly bodies. Like, 
I, I think it's, you said it best, it's, it's a confidence thing. They have to really believe that they're it. That's it. There's well, no, no turning back. It's got to be frustrating because if you're the heavenly bodies, a lot of wrestling fans that may not know where they are may go, oh, these guys are being what? A tribute band? Are right. they stealing from the past? No, they're honoring it. They were given this persona by Dr. Tom Pritchard. He saw a lot in these guys who struggled to have an identity. He goes, you know what? How about this? You carry on the legacy of a great tag team, and you guys bring this to another level. That's exactly what they've done. I was there that night that it was that it happened. We all saw the conversation backstage. We're all it was a moment, you know, like they were given that tag team name to carry on the legacy. And I say, if I'm not mistaken, and that's been it's been you know years, six years maybe, five years since it happened, they definitely lived up to the name and have done it proud. Oh. Falling arm ringer. How many tag teams, or how many people in wrestling do you hear that the people who initiated the persona Oh, the flippy do! Not only give their blessing up. Smart breakup. Breathe a little bit of life into Jose. Who definitely needs it at this point. How many times do you see other wrestlers go, you know what? I not only do I give them my blessing, I endorse them. These are the guys to watch. These are the guys that can actually do not only what they did, but take it to another level. Oh, here we go. Here's the tag in the hose B. The fresher of the two now. Knocking J D Desirable Dustin off the corner. House of fire, here comes hose B. You're right, the demeanor of Team Espana has definitely changed. Oh, they are locked in here. And he may be Hose B, but I've heard from many that he is the leader of this tag team. He's the general. Every tag team has a general. And Hose B is it. Oh, it's a Gary right to the back of the head, and out goes Gigolo Justin. He's on Dream Street right now, and now the bodies have to regroup. Team of is going to have to capitalize his momentum if they want to go further. Oh, boy. A bunch of kids out there! Oh! Oh, right out in front of the birthday boy. You could have your birthday party too here at WrestlePro or CreativeProWrestling.com to help keep the lights on. Thank you very much. There is nothing like a WrestlePro or CreativePro birthday party. Nothing. Especially when Pat Cena headlines. <laughs> the world needs more Pat Cena. There we go. Oh! Could that be it? Oh, oh. look at that. The smarts of Desirable Dustin using a spear-like tactic to break up the pin. And, and now the body. On there. Wow. Breaking the rules to enforce the rules. Look at that. And where is Desirable Dustin going? Where is, this is not like him at all. Oh! oh, no one's in the pool. I don't know if he got his forearm, though. The roll up. He got him. And the Oklahoma roll is quite big. The momentum, the momentum heading into their tag team title match against LAX. They couldn't be hotter right now. Team Hispania versus LAX, November 9th, Fight TV, Russell Pro. Order it, please. We continue our night with the following contest and is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the WrestlePro Silver Championship. Huh? <laughs> Introducing first, from Sparta, Greece, weighing in at 209 pounds, he is the WrestlePro Silver Champion.
Hello, everybody. My name is Pat Buck, calling the action live here, Russell Pro Brooklyn. And we have a Russell Pro Silver Championship title bout about to happen in the ring. Nikos Rikos wearing the black and blue, what do you call the out outfit? Versus Buster in the trunks, black trunks. And here we go, collar double tie up. Nikos getting right into the thick of things, just pounding away on his opponent. You know, we were talking about all these people making moves in 2018. Is there somebody on this roster who has made more waves on this, in this company, this year, than Nikos Rikos? On fire. Nikos is known to cut corners. Oh, look at a little Spitfire go. Buster Jackson getting a little bit of an opportunity of a lifetime here tonight. Trying to become the Wrestle Pro Silver champion. These guys got to take it inside the ring. I don't want to get fined by the commission. Oh, wait, they're not here tonight. Thank God. Oh, good. That, that will explain the tables match. Oh. <laughs> Buster now trying to get back in. And just that, that extra second of hesitation cost Nikos Rikos. A lot of hard clubs to the back, but Nikos got to isolate the body part. I've seen him go for victories with that Boston Crab, with that Greek Crab. And also the backstabber type maneuver. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Throwing oh. Buster by his head. Buster now heads up. Oh. oh, Buster's still a rookie though. I would have had him hook his leg, go for that pinfall. The momentum knocked him off. Oh, Jesus. Buster Jackson. Oh, whoa, oh. inside out, upside down. Buster Jackson to the mat. Nikos with the weight advantage, delivering that hard lariat. Shaking the cobwebs loose. Elects not to go for a cover. Which some veterans would say is a mistake. I don't know, if you know your opponent's not beat, you know you're not gonna get him, why waste the energy covering? Punish him a little bit more, go for victory when you feel it's appropriate. Right back to the offensive is Nikos Rikos here. What a way, Nikos Rikos cashing in that on the spot title shot medallion a couple months back, taking out a very vulnerable and beat up Dan Moff, and disguised as a paramedic. So obviously he is taking full advantage of every opportunity. And that's not even talking about the controversial ending to the on the spot title shot medallion ladder match. I mean. You're right, he's been cutting corners, but he's getting the job done, and he comes in this one reigning, defending. Not only that, in other promotions, you would think that you target the main title. That's what everybody does. You go for the main championship. Oh! Oh, oh boy. That's got to be it. Good night. Oh, oh. We had a fight from Buster. This guy, this guy also trying to make his way individually is Buster Jackson. Oh, mama. A lot of promotions. Oh, could we get a victory here? No. A lot of promotions. They have some sort of match where you can get a shot at the title. Nikos won that, the on-the-spot title shot. Everyone thought he's going to try to go for CAQ's title, the WrestlePro Gold title. Instead, he elected to go for Dan Moff's Silver Championship, a move nobody expected. Never been done in wrestling. You go for... I don't want to say the second tier title, but hey, gold is higher than silver. That's right. the perception of the fans. And he went, and he's victorious. The strategy worked. Jackson with a hard forearm here. Another one. Oh, need a face. It's up. Holds on, Look at that. Holds on to him. The momentum now is swung. Dig your deep, dig deep, dig deep. Oh, oh, you know, not for nothing, but tonight we really haven't had one of those big time upsets of the night. This would be it. Buster Jackson coming out of the woodwork to try to get a silver championship. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, oh. the backstabber not finished off. So many men, and I think it might have just finished Buster off here, if he can get a pin, but he's gonna go for that. You, you, 
Look at this. Oh, but right into it, Pat. Right into it. Shades of a young Lionheart. He got it full now. Buster has to get to the ropes in order to continue. Will he give up here? He, no, oh, look at him walking him back. That's the quad strength. That's gotta be it. That's it, folks. Here is your winner and still WrestlePro Silver Champion, Nico Rico. In it, he's one of the hottest stars at WrestlePro, and another victory here in Brooklyn for Nico Rico, still champ. Contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Brooklyn, New York, weighing in at two hundred and four pounds. The hand of God, We can call it the reemergence of Anthony Bowens here tonight in Brooklyn. Pro Wrestling's five tool player. And that's exactly what he is. But tonight, he starts his new run against Brooklyn's own Talon. Now, Talon with a side headlock with Anthony Bowens. Bowens off. Oh! Look at that, the strength of Anthony Bowens. Look at this now, little standoff. Oh, look at this. Anthony Bowens, you've been seeing the vignettes online. He's been telling people he wants to be an inspiration. And while that may be true, tonight he's showing Brooklyn he's better than them. And now Talon with the Brooklyn crowd behind him. Where's he going? Talon now. Swing and a miss by Bowens. 
And a kick right in the face. And look at Talon showing off the athleticism. Going up and over! And through the woods! Talon's got Brooklyn shaking here. Anthony Bowens is reeling. You know, Bowens has called himself the five-tool player because he believes he possesses all of the talent it takes to be a very successful professional wrestler. The look, the strength, the personality. You name it, he's got it. He's got all five, folks. He's very well-rounded. But now, he's got talent in no man's land. Oh, my! And now he's eating up the crowd. Something we are not familiar with is Anthony Bowen showing off, Pat. What is this? You know, the last couple of months, I talked to Anthony Bowens. Last couple of months, Anthony Bowens has shown a different level, different personality. And I told him, man, go with what you feel. I think he's fed up. He's been told, I'm sure you may have addressed this before, but he's been told by national companies over and over again, hey, you're on our radar, you're next. He's frustrated. He's got all the tools, look at him. And he's not where he wants to be. He's taking out on talent. You would think a personality like that and frustration would work in, into your favor, but let's, oh. let's call how we see it. If he gets a little too confident, he could catch himself on a losing end here tonight in Brooklyn. Talon's got that home field advantage. Oh, absolutely. Bowens with him in the middle of the ring now. Talon trying to get up, feeding off the energy here in Brooklyn. Oh my, Whoa, look at this, this? Frank! Oh! Innovative offense by Anthony Bowens. Anthony Bowens has gotten over his Power Ranger infatuation. Doesn't He's not smiling as much. He's yeah. fed up. I mean, look, he's done all he could. He's worked on his body. He's, he's got all the talent in the world. And sometimes he's mocked. I mean, look, oh, it's the Green Ranger, Anthony Bowens. This is him. This is, this is who Anthony Bowens is. He's well-loved in his community. On social media, he's praised. He gets booked for a real deal. Oh, oh my. Real deal movies and commercials. The guy's a star and he's wondering, why am I not further in pro wrestling? Ooh. Right to the corner, ducked out of the way is Talon. Talon now with a right forearm and another one. Landing flush on the chin. Oh! oh. Big back elbow by Talon. Bowen's reeling a little bit here. Kick to the stomach. Look at, oh! oh! Twisting Fisherman Buster. Oh, baby. I had my hand on the little, whatever you call it, the hammer, <laughs> to end this match. But the fight in Bowens continues. This is the venue where talent comes alive. The veteran competitor might be going for that vicious stomp. He's going for it, up. Oh. Schoolboy here by Bowens. Does he got him? Oh, right in the middle of the ring. Got a cross face, he's got a cross face. And he's got it locked under that chin, Pat. Not many places to go. Bowens in a bad way. Bowens gonna have to dig his hips and roll through. Oh, the crowd wants it. This but drunk Bowens crowd in not. Brooklyn is going electric for Talon. You know, Talon's one of those guys that was recruited by KM when they tried to, oh, it's a reform reality check, one of the stables here at WrestlePro. But I'm telling you right now, Talon can do this on his own. Maybe Talon just saw opportunity to get his foot in the door and now is emerging as a single star here at WrestlePro. 
Oh! He can knock off Anthony Bowens. Who knows what his future holds? Oh, oh my goodness. On the button. That might have knocked him silly. Oh! Whoa. A springboard DDT. Wow! Seton Hall graduate with that hard right hand and that jump up DDT. Just a two count. Now, Bowens, you can see it in his face. You can see it in his face. How frustrating this has to be. He cannot put talent away here in Brooklyn. Five tool players in the fourth quarter here. Does he have enough gumption to solidify a victory here? I tell you what, for years we've known Bowens as a fan favorite, but I am hearing a different tone. And maybe, maybe because Talon is from here, I get that. But there's definitely a different demeanor! Oh, I saw the look in Talon's eyes. I don't know what he's going for. But he's on the opposite side of the ring. Can where we see a little? Is, where, Pat, where's Talon going? He might be going for a little coast-to-coast -coast action. This is 16 feet across the ring. From Brooklyn to Sacramento. Oh, baby! On the money for the cover, the count! And Talon gets, oh! oh! Only two. Wow! We've had some serious action here in Brooklyn tonight, but this one might be taking the cake. These two are leaving it all in the ring tonight. The Brooklyn crowd getting on the referee. As much as I want to put down Ref Steve, that was a fair count. And now What's what? This? Now what? He's going to the back of the playbook now for this one. On his favorite perk. Oh! Oh, he might have, he might have, his knee might be hurt. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. Heads up, the bones, boom! No! Possum, he's playing possum. Did he outsmart the five-tool player? Roll up! Oh! oh. Oh, oh, he kicks out that, that bad one. knee. I don't know if he was playing possum, Pat. Oh, oh, look at that. That's 15 yards in the NFL, Pat, but perfectly legal here. That's a clip. The blind side block. Bowens calling his shot. Bowens goes for the knee again and misses. Tripped up. The stop. Oh, Lord. The torque of that neck. Five two players, two inches shorter. He's got, got him. him! What a big victory for Talon. Here is your winner, Talon! Oh my, what a phenomenal, phenomenal contest between two premier athletes here at WrestlePro. My goodness.
Russell Pro. My name is Pat Buck. All in the action alongside Deep Sturgeo as he returns from ring announcing duty. Oh, like a bullwhip, Dan Mock, the Bariqua Beast, the Bayonne Badass. Guy's got more names than Apollo Creed versus Big Deal Craig Steele. As far as I know, this might be Craig Steele's first time in the main event here at WrestlePro, but deservedly so. One thing I love about WrestlePro, I dare any other promotion to challenge that, I believe that we have the best heavyweights in the nation. You go to any other independent wrestling show, you see guys under 250 pounds, they'll put you to sleep, not these guys. These guys will beat the piss out of each other and move around like two cruiserweights. No pinfalls in this one, Pat, no submissions. The only way you're winning this one here in Brooklyn, you put your opponent through a table or something. Oh. I was saying this might be unexpected. I believe, as far as I know, this is Craig Steele's first main event here at WrestleCro. Wow. Oh! And I boy, has he earned it. He's really separated himself from the pack. And I believe I heard you as I was coming. Oh, heads up. Coming back on commentary that we have the best heavyweights in the nation. And these are two hard, heavy hitters right here. Dan Moth is no stranger to the main event in any independent wrestling forum in the country. Craig Steele taking his time, stalking Dan Moth around the ring. We saw a series of clotheslines, hard hitting lariats. Both men taking the fight to each other. Both men, very close friends outside this ring. So it might be kind of a tough spot to really go in there with some of, one of your closest allies. All right, good friends indeed. But when it comes to WrestlePro and making your way, Getting back up into the ranking system, you gotta secure every win you can possibly get. Dan Moff, a former silver champion, has been in the ring with some of the greatest of all time, and I'm not exaggerating that one. He's been out there with a lot of them. Craig Steele, also no stranger to pro wrestling. He's been around the block. And it's just a matter of time before these guys that one-on-one, -on -one. and I hate saying it, in pro wrestling age to me is absolutely irrelevant. Dan Moff is a guy that gets younger every time I see him. In 2018, when you have men in their late, early, mid 40s and early 50s headlining and tearing crowds down, age is absolutely just not a thing anymore. It's how you perform in the ring. It's how young you feel in the ring. And Dan Moff is better than most that are in their 20s. The Benjamin Button of pro wrestling has been called. He just keeps getting better with age. And Dan Moff now has Craig Steele in a very vulnerable situation here in the corner. Craig Steele first made his emergence in I believe the late 90s on the New Jersey independent wrestling scene. He took some time off. He was fed up with the wrestling scene. I believe Dan Moff was one of the main reasons why he came back to professional wrestling many, many years later. The Bam Bam Gigolo. Legitimate bouncer, ass kicker from New Jersey. You'll see him at the Taboo nightclub. Nice little plug. <laughs> so now Dan Mop trying to. Oh, look at that. And uh, nice little gesture there to some of the crowd. Craig Field trying to bounce this back. We're not going to see any collar and elbow tie ups, headlock takeovers. Hurricane Ronas, you won't see any of that. Just hard hitting Look strikes. Look at this. Oh. 286 pounds lifted with ease. Well, that's what I'm looking for now. Where is Dan Moff going? I don't know if I've ever seen him successfully do anything off the top rope. Oh. Handful of little Moffs. That's a long way down for a 300 pounder. Dan Moth, the master of the burning hammer. Craig putting people away with that sit down tombstone pile driver. Craig's gonna look for some hardware in the form of a table. My goodness. You said it best, thank goodness. The commission is not here tonight to say anything about this. Oh, I don't care anymore. Ah, that's, that's good. <laughs> they let other promotions. <laughs> this is very true, very true. Let there will be no fight. fire here in Brooklyn. The only thing that's on fire right now is this crowd, and they're waiting for somebody to get put through a table. And by the looks and hearing of things, 
You would think they want Moff going flush through. Dan Moff, normally a fan favorite, but maybe Dan Moff is not kid friendly. Plenty of children here tonight in Brooklyn. Got to thank their parents for letting them stay out past their bedtimes here on a Friday. It is the weekend. I mean, ooh. Oh, my. Right into that freshly painted ring post. They look great. They do. They look they shiny. They really look great. Now, look at this. Mop trying to get. Oh, there's a table here. Oh, boy. Oh, wait a minute. And he asked the crowd if they wanted tables. They responded yes. And then he put the table back under the ring. And he took it away. Like taking candy from a baby. Literally. Moff wants to get his action done without any weapons. When's the last time you said that? <laughs> I've lived it, man. I've lived oh, it. Oh, you're right. That's why I'm calling commentary now. Folks, Pat Buck on commentary. If you're not familiar with it, be sure to check out the Wrestle Pro YouTube channel. Plenty of matches between Dan Moff, Pat Buck, a year-long journey, culminating in lots of blood loss, and, and that's why, yes, you're sitting right next to me. <laughs> Craig Steele looks like he's in trouble, though. Last three, four minutes, Moth has just been picking him apart with strikes. Oh, mama! I spoke too soon. Both of these men used to be in the bigger opponent, the bigger fighter in their matches. It's gotta be alarming to go against someone of similar stature. Oh! oh. You're right, you called it. You look across the ring. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, you see somebody smaller than you. When you're Craig and Dan. Look at this, trying to get out of, look at this. He's up. Oh! He's down. So now where does the Bam Bam Chigolo want to go? They're calling for it here in Brooklyn. They want to see some table action. That is the name of this game here tonight. Put your opponent through a table, secure a victory here in Brooklyn. Is that a tables match? This is indeed a tables <laughs> match. <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> and I booked this stuff. <laughs> it was indeed an audible that I heard was changed around 5 p.m. tonight. So it wasn't originally billed as a tables match. You saw both of these guys in the back. You ask them, are they ready? And they say, please change this into something more violent. Yes, I know, Twitter. I am the worst commentator ever. Dan Moff, again, doesn't care about the victory, I guess. He's going to continue his punishment. Doing it right in the middle of the ring is Dan Moff. If anybody knows how to dissect an opponent and beat on somebody's bones, it is Danny Moff. And look at this. A little different, a little that different. Was, that was mom. wonderful. I've seen that before. Look at this. Two brick houses. Flying there. Oh, oh my God. Slap them on the back of the neck into a leg drop. And look, I, I understand that Moff wants to inflict pain, but the name of the game here tonight is to put your opponent through a table. And the ring gear in that ring tonight costs more than my car. <laughs> I do not doubt that at all. Dan Moff, second turnbuckle going up, stop, no! Nobody home. Craig Steele is known for that headbutt though. If he can hit this one at the top rope. Whoa, big swing and a miss. Oh, look oh. at this, going for the deal. There's a goozle. Again, no pinfalls. Normally, yeah, you would see Craig try to pin his opponent right after that. Craig knows the name of the game here. He's, he's got to find a table and got to find it fast. You're not going to see Dan Moff stay on the ground too long. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not a real table. I was just going to say, not only is that a table, it looks to be at least 12 feet. Those are $90 a pop. Hope Home Depot had a sale, or maybe we found them at some other show. I don't know. But boy, oh, boy, that table is going to become a factor very quick. Craig Seals got to get in there, set that thing up, find your, your oh, oh, wait a minute. 
Goes downstairs. Oh, oh no! Did it break? He's still in this. Is that it broke? Bends. It didn't break though. Andre Giannico, our senior referee here, looking for a break in the table. And there is no break, folks. So now Dan Ma trying to put together some furniture. It's probably as frustrating as getting something from Ikea at this point. You can see the indent on the table, though. It's done some damage. Yes, you can. So as that table now softened up just a little bit, we're going to find out. Look at the angle of that table, though. This is making me nervous. Yeah, this is uh, not sure what's in the arsenal here. Oh, what's he oh, going for? What in the hell is Dan Mott doing? Oh, my Lord. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, thank God. What's he going for? Oh! That's the second time Dan Moff's bells have been rung here tonight. Heads up, Andre. Get out of the way. Oh! Oh, man. Craig Steele looking to put your opponent away. Looking over at us. Threw him like Uncle Phil to Jazzy Jeff right to that corner. All the oh, the legs no. are broken, but it's still intact. You gotta think on the fly, you gotta call an audible. How do you get your opponent through that? You ain't gonna get it back on like that. You gotta put it in the corner. There you go. Exactly what he's doing, thinking on his feet. Anything can happen in pro wrestling. Absolutely, and look, you, you said it best. They put some dents in it, and now the legs can't hold. Up and now up. up, look at this, 300 pounds on top of the shoulders Going with no avail. Death Valley driver. There is a table set up, folks. The first one to go through it is the loser, and look at this! Oh, here's some big boys. Whoa! Put on the brakes. Whoa! Whoa. What's it going for here? Wait a minute. They're slugging it out. They are really throwing everything they got left in the tank. It's Dan Moff and Craig Steele. Weave through. He's got him up! Oh my goodness! Oh! Craig Steele with the victory! Oh my goodness! Here is your winner, the Big Deal, Craig Steele! And in his first main event, the Big Deal, Craig Steele knocks off Big Match Dan. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness gracious, I mean, look, you gotta admit, this has to put Craig in a great spot, a great spot heading into our fall season. The next time we'll be live with you, November the 9th in Rawway, New Jersey. We got so many guests. Check out WrestlePoOnline.com. From James Sturgeo, WrestlePro owner and founder, Pat Buck. Good night, Brooklyn. We'll see you in Rawway.